Okay, so here we are. We've got a printed version, a print ready version of Fields of Fate, the solo play enemy activation system. What is it? It's a solo play version that you can adapt to your wargaming. So this is particularly for fantasy wargames like Warhammer Fantasy Battle, Warhammer The Old World. I'll work on other versions for things like 40k and basically you want to set up and have a game you've got no one to game against for whatever reason so how do you play against an enemy army without having to play both sides this is the the problem that i had with solo gaming is that i'm making all the moves for the opponent i'm making all the moves for the army that i want to play so Either things go very scripted, yeah, the generals fight each other, well, obviously, because I made that happen, or my army lost because the other army was better, but I was the other army. So it's kind of hard to feel that achievement of winning a game when you are the opponent at the same time. So I wanted to take that away. I couldn't find any rules except for what do we call activation trees, where you go to an enemy unit, the enemy unit is there an enemy in range, if so, move to this thing which is charge, if not, move to this thing which is, is there an objective, then move to the objective, da 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 And basically what I found was it's very sort of also kind of scripted. They will only do the one thing, so where's that replayability? So we've come up with a slightly different system, and first of all, I'm going to address the, the elephant orc in the room, which is, yes, these guys are just AI-generated orcs on the front cover. I don't have an art degree, I'm no good at doing artwork and stuff, um, and I just put these together to sort of amuse myself while I was making rules, so it wasn't just a blank page with some text on it, and uh, I kind of like it. I could definitely do better with AI and get some other people to help me out with artwork and stuff, but... Look at this guy, this dorky little dude. I think he's kind of adorable and random, so I have not changed them at the moment. But let's have a look inside, okay? Basically, the core of Fields of Fate is activation sheets. There'll be a sheet with how each enemy army is going to work. The first thing that we wanted to address with Fields of Fate was that randomness, that replayability. We didn't want an activation tree. I keep saying we, I mean I. I didn't want an activation tree with just the units doing the same thing every time. So, first of all, the activation sheets have a randomized aspect. You roll a dice and that will affect what the unit decides to do, whether they are gung-ho and charging towards you, or whether they are a little bit more reserved, skirting around, doing some scouting. So that's the first thing is the random dice rolls, um, which will help with that replayability and randomness. The other thing that I wanted to focus on for this game was a green skin army feels different when you play against a greenskin army than, say, a dwarf army, than, say, a vampiric host. So although they have random dice rolls, the results are different and skewed towards different armies, so they actually feel like the army that you're playing against. For instance, the greenskins might have 80% of results will head towards charging the enemy as fast as possible and getting into close combat. Whereas the Vampiric Host, some of those results will be more inclined to resurrect units so that they're sort of an unstoppable host. So getting into it, this is the about the game section. This is if you really want to read through pretty much what I've just said. It's designed to work with what you've got, the gaming system that you've got. So you can't just sort of pick up Fields of Fate and have some models lying around and play a game. <laughs> Your models work with Warhammer 5th Edition, like mine are at the moment, and the play test I'm going to record in a moment. Then you have all that, and then you add this as the activation system for the opponent. The other thing about Fields of Fate is it is supposed to be simple. So even though the activation sheets are different for each army, do they have things like you roll on the orc chart and it's a wah that does a specific thing. No, because that would have changed from 5th edition to 6th edition to 8th to if you're playing a different game. So everything is pretty generic. But let's get into it. I think I have 
so that we can stop looking at this. I have a colour sheet for one of the uh, armies printed out as well. Starting with the setup though, look, you are playing by yourself, solo game, the kind of game that you want to have. So if you want to deploy both armies before, excellent. If you really, really want to though, just have replayability and have a random setup, it also has a sort of random setup section over here where you divide the board into six sort of sections. It's your side and then you roll for which unit goes where. So you can one or two, they go on the left wing, center, right wing, roll for each character. If they've got infiltration rules, then that will apply as well. I don't see that happening too often because I know in my narrative campaigns, if I'm doing this, it's going to be a campaign I'm going to set up the Orc Horde, like an Orc Horde would set up. I'm going to set up the Elves like Elves would set up. So we're getting to the activation sheet. Let's try and give you guys a bit more colour. So this is the activation sheet. A few things about the activation sheets. This is the green skin one. I wanted this to be super simple, kind of like harking back to the reference sheets that you used to get at the, the boards in the old Warhammer games. The back of the bolt action rules, they have those reference sheets. So I wanted it to be super simple so that you could have this on the side, use it without having to shuffle through pages and pages. You've already got your rule book, your battle book, your army books. You don't need an activation system that's going to go over a bunch of pages. That being said, in the actual rule book, we have artwork on one side, activation sheet stuff on the other side. So if people are interested in a more advanced, more technical sort of activation sheet in the future, we could just make them double-sided instead of having the artwork on the other side. But let's have a look at this activation sheet. Basically, the order of your turn, when it's the opponent's turn, you are obviously going to control your army just as you normally would, run through your turn exactly like you normally would. When it's the opponent's turn, you are going to roll on the army order chart, okay? This first chart is going to apply to all enemy units. Doesn't matter if they're monsters, chariots, allies, heroes, whatever, they are going to get this bonus, which gives that sort of unpredictability to the enemy army. The opponent it doesn't have a human to think outside the box. So how do you make it a bit more challenging? One of the ways is to give bonuses to the opposing army to make it super challenging. So as you can see on this one, if the orc non-player, I guess, rolls a one, then no underboss there's a bit of an argument, so all units are minus one leadership. So they've got a negative effect, but most of them will be positive effects. Four and five, wah, plus d6 to all move and charge rolls. Okay, roll once and apply it to the whole army. So roll a six, every army, every unit in the army gets plus one attack. It seems extreme, but as I said, it can be a little bit easy if you're not giving the AI character as much benefit as they can possibly get. After you've rolled on the army chart, let's have a go. I've rolled a one, so the orcs are at minus one leadership, everything in the army. Then each independent character rolls on the hero chart. So for each character, say you've only got one, you've got a small game, 500 points, you've got one general, you roll on here and apply that to the hero. Here we've got Supreme Boss, so re-roll any movement or attack chart rolls this turn. So when you roll on the movement chart, you don't like the result, roll it again. Same for the attack chart, you don't like the result, roll it again. And basically you move through. So the characters, each independent character gets a roll on here. You might want to choose a different colored dice. If you've got a bunch of characters, you can put that next to the character. And all results apply until you roll on this chart again. So just say your AI team goes first and you roll like your each character gets plus one attack or something like that. Then when it's your turn and you're f charging the opponent, you've got to keep that in mind. They've got that plus one attack. And then their next turn, they'll roll in this chart again. After you've done all the characters, okay, the hero chart the characters, then it's the magic phase and you will roll four. The wizards, okay, what are they going to do? They're going to cast one spell. They're going to cast a random spell that automatically succeeds. Keep rolling up the chart. They might cast two spells. Or they might cast a spell or a dispel with a total power for the Warhammer players out there. Once the character stuff is done, then simply go down to the movement. 
and roll on a movement chart. So for each unit, including those characters that have already had these rolls, roll on movement chart and you got, might get a one, which means Ooh. hold position, you've lost what you're doing. Steady advance, you might roll a charge or a march, all that sort of stuff. You might get a super cool charge where you've got like plus one, plus D6 movement, whatever. We have wheels and orders facing enemy units. Good one for the archers to get. And down here we have the attack chart. So if you're a melee unit and you've moved and you've charged and you made it into combat, then the attack chart's not really going to matter. You're going to attack the people in front of you. Um, you may get a result where it says attack the key enemy target. So if you roll a six, so that means if there is a hero, if there's something in that unit, you're going to direct as many of your attacks as you can against them. So still roll on this chart when you're in combat, even though most of the results will say, like, attack the strongest enemy unit, well, you're in combat. So you just attack the unit you're in combat with. But if you're in multiple combats, that is going to make a difference. So still roll on that chart. This is called the attack chart. I tossed up whether to call it the target sort of chart, like target this unit, target that unit, because it is for ranged as well. Like I said, I wanted to get everything on one sheet, so I didn't put a separate rolling list for archers, a separate rolling list for war machines, a separate rolling list for cavalry. A lot of these results should be simple and should be able to be applied to everyone. So now when you roll in this chart and it says attack the strongest enemy unit or attack the weakest enemy unit, that makes more of a difference for a bolt thrower or an archer unit that can see a bunch of units, which ones are going to attack. And it has a little caveat down the bottom. Note that all of these things on the attack chart, attack chart like weakest or, or strongest, refer to the available unit to attack. So if you've got some archers and it's like attack a key enemy unit like a battle standard bearer or a general or something like that, and they're not in range, but another unit is in range, you're going to default to attacking what's in range. You'll go through this chart and all of your units will do something random, but focused on what that army is good at, hopefully. So really the only other caveats, quick game's a good game. So if this is a bigger game, if this is like a 3000 point game or something like that, maybe you don't want to roll for each individual unit. Maybe you want to roll once on the movement chart for the whole army and the whole army is going to hold position or the whole army is going to march forward and just apply the results to everyone. Same for attacking. Everyone's going to attack the nearest target or the strongest target or if they can, and that will make it even faster. Okay. And I think that's it. Okay. All of these charts and things ignore compulsory moves. So if you are fleeing, if you are frenzied and have to go towards the nearest target, then it, you don't have to roll on these charts, okay? And that's it. Like I said, each army has their own sort of rules, their own sort of focus as they go through. And this is the first Fields of Fate campaign. So we, I put together a campaign, a bit of a storyline. It's not epic. It's not 30 pages. It's got four games in it, narrative games that have different results, depending on who wins and who loses, different games to set up. If people like it, I am 100% a narrative-focused person. I can definitely write pages and pages and pages of narrative campaign stuff. Happy to do it. But that is your brief taster. That, that video lasted way longer than I thought it would. Next up, we are going to have a demonstration game. So there are some Chaos Warriors and Beastman Army, 450 points of each. So I kind of cheated because all of the army rules are in the same book, the Realm of Chaos book for 5th edition. So I don't have to have a different army book as you would if you were playing, I guess, Wood Elves and other things like that. So I'll finish the video there. Hopefully that clears some stuff up and gets you interested in checking it out. All right. See you next time.